Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 11.1 .1, gas exchange in humans. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 11.1 .1, you need to identify the structures of the respiratory system, describe the features of gas exchange surfaces, investigate the differences between inspired and expired air, and investigate the effects of physical activity on rate and depth of breathing. For extended, you also need to explain the role of the respiratory muscles in breathing, the effects of physical activity on rate and depth of breathing, and the ways in which the respiratory system protects itself from pathogens and particles. The role of the breathing system is to move air into and out of the lungs, so that oxygen needed for respiration can diffuse into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide can diffuse outwards. We'll begin with the main structures of the system. The lungs, located in the thorax or chest region, are expanded and compressed by the actions of the respiratory muscles and movement of the ribcage. The diaphragm is a large muscular sheet located just below the lungs and the intercostal muscles sit between and control the movements of the ribs. When we breathe in, air passes through the mouth or nasal passages, through the larynx or voice box and into the trachea. The trachea divides into the left and right bronchi and then the smaller bronchioles which distribute air throughout the lungs. Finally, the air reaches the alveoli, the site of gaseous exchange. Now the alveoli has have a number of features that ensure gases diffuse efficiently. Their vast number and specialized shape maximizes the area of the exchange surface and they have an excellent blood supply as each alveolus is surrounded by a network of capillaries. The blood in these capillaries removes oxygen continually, maintaining a steep concentration gradient between air and blood. The walls of the alveoli and the capillaries that surround them are only one epithelial cell thick. This reduces the distance over which gases must diffuse, speeding up the rate of exchange. The alveoli are also very well ventilated. Pulmonary ventilation or breathing constantly replaces oxygen and removes carbon dioxide, which helps to maintain steep concentration gradients for both gases. Remember, the greater the difference in concentration either side of the exchange surface, the faster the rate of diffusion. Finally, the alveoli are lined with a thin film of moisture, which allows oxygen to dissolve and pass freely across the epithelium. Next, you need to investigate the differences in composition position between inspired and expired air. Partially fill two boiling tubes with lime water, seal and insert delivery tubes. Breathe in and out through the mouthpiece for 15 to 30 seconds. The way in which the delivery tubes are set up means that atmospheric air is drawn in through the lime water in tube A and expired air is forced out through the lime water in tube B. The lime water in tube A remains clear and the water in tube B turns milky, indicating the presence of carbon dioxide. Now expired air contains more carbon dioxide and less oxygen than inspired air because oxygen is used up and carbon dioxide produced by respiration in the cells. In addition, expired air is saturated with vapour, while the vapour content of inspired air varies depending on the levels of atmospheric humidity. Next, you need to investigate and describe the effects of physical activity on the rate and depth of breathing. This investigation uses an instrument called a spirometer, which produces a trace on a piece of paper or monitor. The subject breathes in and out of the spirometer through the mouthpiece while resting and then during a period of exercise. Depth of breathing, otherwise known as tidal volume, is indicated by the amplitude or height of the trace and breathing rate by frequency. Both breathing rate and tidal volume go up during exercise to meet the increased demand for oxygen in the muscle cells. Okay, so that's everything for core, so we'll move on now to the extended section, beginning with the roles of the respiratory muscles in pulmonary ventilation. The respiratory muscles are the diaphragm a muscular sheet that sits below the lungs, and the intercostal muscles that move the ribcage. The external intercostals contract to pull the ribs upwards and outwards, while the internal intercostals contract to pull them downwards and inwards. When breathing in, the diaphragm contracts and flattens, and the external intercostals contract to expand the ribcage. These actions serve to increase the volume of the thorax and lungs, which causes the air pressure within to drop below that of the atmospheric air. Since gases move from from areas of high to low pressure, air rushes in through the nose and trachea. Incidentally, the trachea and bronchi are lined with rings of cartilage that prevent the airways from collapsing while breathing. 
When breathing out forcibly, for example during exercise, the diaphragm relaxes and domes upwards, and the internal intercostal muscles contract, pulling the rib cage downwards and inwards. These actions serve to decrease the volume of the thorax and lungs. As a result, air pressure within the lungs increases, and air is forced outwards. Now, the air we breathe in contains around 21% oxygen and 0.04% carbon dioxide. Some of the oxygen is absorbed into the bloodstream, while carbon dioxide produced by respiration diffuses into the alveoli. As a result, expired air contains less oxygen and significantly more carbon dioxide than atmospheric air. In addition, some of the moisture that lines the alveolar walls evaporates and saturates the air with water vapour. Expired air therefore contains a lot more vapour than inspired air. Next, you need to explain the link between physical activity and rate and depth of breathing. So when we exercise, both breathing rate and tidal volume increase to meet the higher demand for oxygen in the working muscles. As rate of reaction increases, carbon dioxide accumulates in the muscle cells and diffuses into the blood plasma more rapidly. The brain detects the rising carbon dioxide concentration in the blood and stimulates the breathing muscles to contract more rapidly and forcefully. This increases the rate of expiration of carbon and dioxide and inspiration of oxygen. Finally, you need to know how the gas exchange system protects itself from pathogens and particles. The alveoli are extremely delicate and vulnerable to physical damage and infection. To prevent particles in the air from reaching them, specialized cells called goblet cells in the lining of the trachea, bronchi, and some of the larger bronchioles secrete a sticky liquid called mucus. The mucus traps pathogens and dust and is then carried away by ciliated cells in the epithelium. The the continuous movements of the cilia carry the mucus up towards the top of the trachea so that it can be swallowed. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 11.1 .1, gas exchange in humans. If you enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate your subscription and I'll see you next time for topic 12.1 respiration.